So welcome to week two of Up With Downton. And may we start with a wowzers. Wow. That was a tough episode to watch. It was. As a viewer and as someone who loves Anna. Wow. I, I really honestly don't know where to start. You could answer one of my questions. Why yeah. the house party? What, what was Cora doing? She just liked to have company. And I appreciate that. I she too. said. She d- I missed it. In, the, it? Uh, in the bedroom scene, when she's talking to, to, uh, to Robert, how she liked to have young men in the house. She's referring to uh, Lord Gillingham, Samson. And so she just throws it to invite people over. I think I, she was parading possible suitors in front of oh, Mary. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Bring her back from the edge. I got it. All right. Plus, opera. <laughs> When's it, when, op, there's never a bad time for opera. You know, in live opera room. in the Except living room. Except at dinner. <laughs> um, so, let's dive right in. This was a difficult episode to watch. It's um, a little difficult to talk about, too. So, I'm going to turn it over to one of the best spoken, best written people, Julian Fellows, the series creator, who put out uh, some statements regarding this this issue. Uh, he wants us to know that this was a common occurrence in states like Downton in the 20s, and he and the producers felt that a subject could, uh, it was a subject that could be used to portray what many women in Anna's position suffered, suffered through while employed as servants. Um, Anna, the actress who plays her, Joanna Froggett, uh, was interviewed when this aired previously in England. And um, she worked with the the historical advisor on the series, Alistair Bruce, who explained that 100 years ago when the story was set, women felt uncomfortable going to the police. And that even, like Anna, if they were at no fault, there was a sense of guilt and and blame. Mm. And I think um, in other statements that I've seen, Fellows says this is something that's going to be further explored during the season. Oh, okay. And his emotional recovery. How she, how the relationship with Bates is affected. So let's stay tuned. We could already see that happening last night at the very last scene when she's Absolutely. Away. Well, I, I, and I think. Um, you know, that is what the reason for, for doing that with that character is to go through her journey and which is still, I mean, that's still a side effect of those events happening today is shame, um, self, self blame, um, and, and all those things. And I think that's what they'll explore. And it, it, it was, I mean, I don't want to say tastefully done, but I mean, it didn't focus. I mean, it, it didn't show. It was artfully done. They, right. I mean, I, I think to set it up because that's really what the journey for Anna is going to be is, is, is the after, after effects, what comes next and how she, she gets through the rest of the season, you know, what's going to happen. Um, you know, Mrs. Hughes knows, but what's going to happen if, when Bates finds out and how is she, is how is she personally going to get through it herself? Mm. It seems right now she's more worried about her husband uh, finding out uh, and not dealing with it herself yet, but hopefully that'll come. And I just got to say, what a strong performance by Joanna Froggett as Anna. She's and, amazing. Yeah, yeah, even Mrs. Bates. Mrs. Hughes, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hughes was also, man. She's so good. Everyone on the show. They're, yeah, they're all very good, but no, the, Anna's, Yeah, she did. Incredible. It Here's, was very believable. It was very, you know, it was very believable. I think that's why there's been such a response, is because it felt real. Yeah, we know we know her as Anna. We don't we don't know the the actress as well because we're not familiar with her other than Anna. So when we see it happens to Anna and she's so believable, we think it really happened to her, and it happened to women like her. But uh, yeah, it was strong. It's, and it, oh, I was just gonna say, it still happens today. We were doing oh, wow. some research uh, before the episode aired as part of our response plan. And we came across a statistic uh, that almost 18% of women today are either victims or, or um, not. They're they're, I'm forgetting. They're not victims, but they're attempted victims or 
I'm sorry, I don't have the the expression here handy, but almost 18 percent, yeah, of right. women hmm. have been affected by this kind of assault. Gosh, and that's, that's a high number. That's 2014. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be used as a teachable moment, and I I think that was probably part of what Julian Fellows. Uh, obviously, it was strategic to pick Anna specifically. Um, you know, to move the story forward, but also I think maybe more people would pay attention if you select the most, not innocent, but, you know, um, most beloved characters uh, and follow, you know, what, how's this going to change her um, moving forward and use that to kind of have maybe those discussions in your family or with your girlfriends or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's true, people still, to this day, and I'm sure everybody knows somebody who's been affected or assaulted like, like Anna was and to, you know, how, how do you help them deal with that? And, you know, are you picking up on the signs if, if they don't come straight to you like she did with Mrs. Hughes? So, and we, we did distribute some, some resources for Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. uh, last night over social media. And we'll put those in the description section underneath the video. Uh, today yeah. you can go to oeta's facebook page or twitter or we're twitter. at oeta okay um moving on let's talk about this was a two minute you know we, we spent you know five minutes talking about a two minute scene it was admittedly the pinnacle of the episode but other stuff happened too maybe we can talk about some lighter happenings on at the estate what was holly what was your favorite moment of this episode well, I don't know if it was a moment. It, it stretched out quite a bit in the episode where Lord Grantham and Carson and the Dowager Countess assume that this world-renowned singer is going to stay in her room and she's only going to come down, show her talents, and then go away. That they're not going to have to socialize with her. And when Cora finds this out, she is appalled that that is the, where their mind is, that that's, that's how they still think. And when, <laughs> when she gets on to Lord Grantham and then... Lord Grantham turns to Carson and says, I blame you. Um, <laughs> I laughed out loud at the expression on Carson's face. Uh, but that's, that's really what he thought, it sh- how it should be. And Cora felt completely differently. And we, and we would today. We would be honored to have uh, a celebrity in our home. We wouldn't lock them in a room and <laughs> feed them dinner on a tray. I wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe if it was a Kardashian, I probably would. <laughs> I guess. I'd hide yeah. that. And way to go, Lord Grantham, you know, taking ownership of the situation. You know, the buck stops over there. <laughs> <laughs> the butler did it. The butler did it. Um, I think my favorite moment, uh, Mr. Gregson was down from London. He's Edith's friend, in, in air quotes. Um, he, I think Lord Grantham knows it's something untoward is happening between he and Edith. So he's been very distant, very cold, and it's been Edith's mission to get the two to like each other. Um, and in his mission. And his mission, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Robert spent most of the episode conveniently finding ex- excuses any time Gregson would attempt a conversation. Oh, I must go pick the wine. <laughs> oh, a busy man. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> off to find our librarian so that he can show you where that book is in our library. <laughs> um, just washing dishes. But my favorite moment was when kind of Gregson gets to be the big hero of the night. He, you know, he tricks the other card guy. And by the way, it's not card shark. It's card sharp. We've all We've, been saying it wrong. <laughs> we had that discussion last night, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I had to look that one up. So I felt dumb for ha- having that phrase wrong my entire life. I card think, sharp. I think it's said both ways, but it started out as card sharp. Can I tell you an embarrassing story from Please. my personal life? <laughs> I found this out probably three or four months ago. I've been saying this wrong. You know, the little sausages that come in the container, they're like six or seven. You open the container, they put them on a cracker. What are those called, Holly? Vienna sausages? Ashley, what are those called? I don't know. I don't. Holly know is what correct. You're they about. are called Vienna sausages. But my entire family—we're talking generations—have <laughs> called them Vienna sausages. <laughs> and when I found that out, I, I had been—I've been saying it wrong my entire life. That sounds is your fancy. Your family, or... family from Miami, Oklahoma? No. Okay. 
Durant? <laughs> they are not from Durant. Hmm. Or we're just from plain old Backwoodsville, I guess. Well, but, no, I think it sounds so nice. I learned, Say it whatever way you'd like. Anyway, so um, Card Shark is wrong. Card Sharp is correct. Gregson is a Card Sharp. He out Card Sharps Samson and wins back all their IOUs. And so he and Lord Grantham are BFF now. But so there's something going on there because... There's got, it kind of seems like the beginnings of maybe something going on with Gregson. Because where did he learn how to... Oh, he does hint at a, a past. Out yeah. sharp, the sharp, the card sharp. Yeah. I said that right. You absolutely did. So is he a shark or is he sharp? That's the question. I think he's a sharp shark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something, though, that, that's another thing that still happens today is the daughter tries to get the dad to like her boyfriend. Totally. And it's never going to happen. <laughs> Not completely. Unless you're the heir. <laughs> Yeah. Then he's okay with it. <laughs> so Funny how that changes it. Did you guys notice, you know, the horrible Mr. Green, who we hate for just being horrible? I didn't like him from the moment I looked at him. But did you notice how the other servants referred to him as Mr. Uh, Gillingham, even though that was not his yeah. name? Remember when they went to, last season, when they went to, where's Rose from? Um, Scotland. Right. When Dunshire. they went to, um, they were all called um, by their... Oh. Who they were? Yeah. So like, um, oh, what's her name that left in the O'Brien? O'Brien was called Mrs. Crawley. Grantham. Yeah, Mrs. Crawley. Mrs. Crawley. Mrs. Well, Crawley or Grantham? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was our, our. Did you know they they would actually do that? It's almost like in a way they they didn't have an identity. They were just it, it almost slave. -like. That's what That's I was thinking. So, it's their master's name. Yeah. That, ugh. I hate that, but. It, it was, was a also worse for the slaves. yeah. It was also yeah. a point of reference in in Julian Fellows' 2002 Gosford Park, which he also wrote. Anyway, that was our did you, that brought to you by <laughs> Did You Know? Um, so we have we're gonna play a game today, guys. If you'll notice, you have I love games. notepads and sharpies, and I'm gonna sharpies? play two sharpies. Gotcha. First question. And don't, this is a secret question, so don't let anyone see what you write. Who is your Downton Abbey spirit animal? And what do I mean by spirit animal? That is the person Jesus. you are most like. The person that you most relate to. If you were on the show, this would be who you were. So write not, down your... When you say animal, you're not meaning Isis, the dog. Well, I guess he is would be the cat? only... There's no cat. There's no cat. Okay. <laughs> so, one you're most like. Yeah. And we're going to try to guess each other's answers Please, before Please, nobody we write Mosley. Oh. That is not you. <laughs> oh, I saw oh, you. Am I writing for <laughs> uh -oh. Am I writing for me or for all of us? Okay. No, you're writing for yourself. So we We're going to go okay. around the table and. Okay, what's next? Oh, well, you can't change it. I did. I am changing it because That's... you saw it. Okay. Oh. I can't think off the top of my head like this. I need to study. I need to research. I need to go through dive gut. deep within. Go with your gut, Holly. <laughs> Gosh, I so don't want to write Edith. Her? <laughs> Poor Edith. <laughs> da, da, okay. Like we, okay. Keep going. All right. What's next? Well, that I'll is... I'll come back to that one. Okay. If you would like to, before we reveal our answers here, the next game we're going to play is if you were stuck on a desert island with a member from Down Abbey, with the cast... Not with the cast member, but with the person. We're pretending like they're real people. If you were stuck they're on not, an island uh, with, with a Downtoner, uh -huh. who would it be and why? So... <laughs> Oh, and why? Well, no, we we're just really here to, to be. No, why. we don't have to say why. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. These Sharpies are very okay. fragrant. Fragrant. Okay. How are we doing, guys? We're going. Let's keep going. Let's do it. Is that it? Um, Holly, I'm going to guess your, your person, your spirit animal. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Mrs. Hughes for you. Don't That's, tell me. Don't okay. tell me. Ashley. I don't know. I'm not British. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe Martha. Yeah. Levinson? She's kind of sassy. I like her. She speaks her mind. And... Okay. Maybe I mean. I, but they're all so distinct, like her, but maybe a little bit nicer version of her. You want to take a guess on mine? 
Well, I saw what you wrote. Well, I didn't. Okay. I changed it. So you did. Yeah. Uh, Carson. Very close. That's interesting. Well, I know that's your favorite character. Okay, let's do the big reveal. Okay. Holly, who's yours? I had three. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't decide. I'm Rose sometimes because I'm I mean, just, I like to have fun. I'm Mrs. Patmore sometimes. When I'm at home, when I'm mom, I'm Mrs. Patmore trying to get it all done. And at, at work, I feel like Mrs. Hughes. Okay. Well, since we work together, that's... I, no, yeah, yeah, that's a really great guess because that you see me as work. It's kind of like the cast of Facts of Life. Like you could identify with Tootie sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> you can identify with Blair. Maybe Joe. Depends on what your mood was in that day. Holly, would you take a guess for me? Who would you guess? Oh, by? Branson. No. Are we ready for my big reveal? <gasps> Matthew, <gasps> that was what I saw. I know. I just. Told you I changed it. I didn't really realize. Sorry I didn't think he was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was in the running since he's no well, longer with us. Now he's really us. a spirit, so oh, makes it. Oh, uh, that's a trick question. Uh, then I would say Sybil. Her? No, I yeah. love Sybil. I miss Sybil. I saw she's in a new movie with uh, Colin Farrell that's coming out. It's on ad for it this weekend. Looks really good. Good for her. Good for her. Um, so question two. Desert Island down, Abby. Mine is. Patmore, of course. Miss Patmore would be the person you would want. <laughs> she can make food, right? She can make yeah. food. Smart. And fire. I mean, they have, like, wood-burning stoves or whatever. She's a survivalist. You bet. Yeah. What about me? Yeah. I think you and Ashley have the same one. Oh. <laughs> Are we going to fight over him? Branson. Ash? Okay. You can let me have him? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> then who was your... Who was your well... I don't know. I'm kind of like Lady Mary. I can't decide. There's just too many <laughs> options. Well, if it doesn't work out with uh, Branson and I, I'll take Alfred. Because he also can cook. And, and, he can and he's tall. He can, and he's redhead. He's tall. Yeah, and he can deliver the food, too. <laughs> that's right. So that's two skills. <laughs> he's very nice. <laughs> but I think Branson just had to set the table. <laughs> Branson knows the civilized uh, world, and then he knows the downstairs world. He can farm. He can chauffeur. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of carry you around. Right. Yeah. 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 Cart, cart and buggy thing. <laughs> anyway, sure. we are just almost out of time, guys. So this is our wrap-up question this week. What should Mosley's profession be next week? We've seen him uh, <laughs> pounding the pavement on the street. We've seen him delivering groceries. Now he's bumped down to a footman. Pick, pick his next profession. I have. Yes, please. I have one. You want me to go? Go. Okay. I think he's going to be a stable shoveler. That's his <laughs> my prediction know. for next week's profession. He's kind of his own worst enemy. Poor Mosley. You know. Yeah. Um, Did we talk about him as a waiter? I can see him dropping drinks. And Well, he's a waiter <laughs> in last night's episode. Not really, but kind footman. Of. <laughs> the long-suffering footman. That's what they should call him. Uh, oh, wait. He, he valet, right? He was Matthew's valet. He was Matthew's. Now he's. He got bumped down, has to wear white gloves. Jumping from job to job. Which is apparently he, a very sad state to be in. He white still, gloves. He wants to. He was living the dream. And now he's, you know, hmm. dealing with asphalt. And it's, it's not and his Delivering fault. groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know how much lower can he go. Uh, shoe shiner. They had shoes. Did they have? They had they shoes. Had shoes. They had shoes. I think. And things to shine them with. Yeah. And he could carry on a conversation with whoever. Shoes Probably shining. would be awkward though. It would be awkward, but isn't it always yeah. when someone's shining so. your shoes? <laughs> He's precious. Holly, what, what's Mosley's next profession going to be? Um. Well, if we're talking about modern day. Uh, I think maybe he would be a good taxi driver. Yeah. You've again awkward conversation, but you don't have to as long as you don't crash into things, you don't have to know too much. You know, maybe he should follow the Branson model and sweep Lady Edith off her feet. But she's he's a little older. Maybe what, Isabel. What would their couple name be? Meedith? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Musabel. Edley. I don't know. I think I think uh, the Dowager may have a crush on Mosley. She, she you know. does always seem to be rooting for him. Yeah. Well, folks, that's all the time we have this week. So until next week, find us online. If you have a comment you want to discuss on the show, we're we're on Facebook at OETA the Oklahoma Network. We're on Twitter at OETA OK, and we're also on YouTube, which is uh, where you're probably viewing this podcast. Um, we'll see you next week.